This is an intro to using Google Colab with Python for Math 419 slash 519. So I've got a, uh, a Python file, a Jupyter Notebook, loaded up in Google Collaboratory here. That's the icon for Colab. Um, and right now it's a series of, I mean, uh, Python Notebooks are a series of text cells like this one. Uh, so I double clicked there to show the contents of the cell. And I can um, type here with any changes. And then if I hit escape, then it shows me the new version of the cell uh, with those changes. I can double click again and delete those since that wasn't something I really wanted to record for all time. And then hit escape again. Here's another text cell. Uh, and then here's a code cell, which I can double click on and start uh, typing more code if I want. Notice that it has a little play button next to it to run the code, uh, or I can press Control enter um, Right now, I don't have a uh, machine in the cloud that's actually running anything. You can see up here it says connect, but it doesn't indicate that I've actually connected with the machine. So I can do that now if I want. I can say connect to usually a hosted runtime. That'll be out in the cloud somewhere. And it says connecting, waiting, waiting, waiting. Okay, so now it says uh, I've got something running and this is how much of the RAM of it I'm using and this is how much of the disk space. Um, I can also see uh, a graph of how much I've used through time. If I want to use a GPU, I can change the runtime type, but uh, we won't really need that here in our class. And we can X that out. Um, so here I could come and hit the play button and it runs it and tells me how long it took. Um, and then I could come to this box and hit the play button and it tells me, tells me how long it took. Uh, so I've just created some variables. Um, here in Python to create or assign to a variable you have to use a single equals. You can't use the left facing arrow like you can in R. Um, so I've just created these variables, stored things in them, but I didn't ask for any output, so I didn't get any output from the cell. I can see what's in various variables by using this thing on the side, and it will show me um, the names of the variables, what type they are. In this case, they're integers, uh, which is kind of interesting because the mean doesn't need to be an integer, but since I didn't give it a decimal like this, it figured it didn't need to be a decimal. So I just reran that, and now it took a little, like a, a tenth of, uh, I don't know, half a second to update. But now we can see that it's figured out that the mean needs to be able to store decimals, so it's called a floating point variable. Um, and if I scroll over to the right here, I can see the values currently in those. Uh, having this open can slow things down, so um, I usually don't use it unless I really need to. Um, so X that out. Other sidebar tools here, uh, this can show you the table of contents. Uh, so I've got some things farther down here um, that are headers. Um, and so I can click on that and it'll take me to that. Uh, just like in our markdown, uh, you can designate a header in a text cell by starting with a, a hashtag or two hashtags for a second level header, etc., or subsection. Um, if you want to hide cells uh, under a header, you can click this little arrow and it'll hide everything under that header down to the next header. Uh, so sometimes I do that for pedagogical purposes to avoid revealing things too early. Um, so let's come back up here. Uh, so here we're saying repeat the number one for however many trials we had decided up there. Um, and then print that so we get 10 copies of the number one and then we multiply all of them by the designated demand mean which is 100 so we get 10 copies of the number 100. Uh, this is just a text cell that uh, I created but ended up not using. This is a good chance to show there's the up arrow and down arrow to move this cell higher up or lower down so it doesn't really matter where it is. You can just move it up or down. Um, all right, so then the next cell um, is talking a little bit about random numbers and generating them in a reproducible way. Uh, 
anytime we're doing imports, we really should do them way up at the top. But um, I wanted to show that they're tightly linked to this part in particular, uh, rather than that part. All right, so um, we should run this. Even though I'm just doing kind of throwaway random numbers here, I'm doing the import here, so I should have that available. So here's how we are generating some random values. Uh, it's not printing them. I can go back to the variable inspector and this uh, demands. Where is that? So that's an ND array um, with uh, 10 things in it, and it's showing me the values. So that's nice. Um, if I scroll over here, I can also see the values. Um, you can do various searching or searching and replacing with this magnifying glass. I find that tends to work better than using Control F uh, in a in the browser window. Um, and then this is the files that are available, and it has some sample data sets in there. So stuff about California housing prices. MNIST is uh, recognizing uh, handwritten digits from little images of them. Um, so sometimes you'll upload files to this and then tell this, uh, tell the code to read it from uh, the files it has handy. Um, but then if the collab thing times out and shuts down and you lose your connection, then you have to upload the file again. So that can be kind of a pain. Um, let's see here, we're doing a computation of um, the how much revenue we get for each of the demands we tried um, using the order quantity that we decided that was repeated, and then we report the mean profit. But then we want to try that for a bunch of different order quantities. Um, so we're setting that up here saying, start from here and go up to there. Um, and these are just integers, so it's just doing a step size of one uh, by default. And then we're creating a place to store the results. And then we do a for loop. And uh, I should remember to hit play here before I hit play there. Um, or I can uh, like click on this cell, come up to runtime, and say run before. So that'll run from the very start of the file all the way down here. And this is a good time to point out these numbers, the 17, 16, 17, 18, show you the order in which things were run. And if I come back and run this one again, it will be 19, even though this is 18. So you can run things out of order, which can be handy if you have a computation that takes a long time. Um, like this for loop could take a long time um, because it's trying multiple things over and over again. And then I want to plot the results. And if I want to uh, change how I'm doing the plot, um, I could change things here, and I don't need to hit run before, it's because I don't want to rerun this part that might have taken a long time. Uh, you can also use run uh, run all or run after. Um, if something is taking a long time that shouldn't be taking a long time, you can say interrupt uh, the execution, and then you can start changing the code again. Um, if things get really messed up, you might need to restart the runtime or just restart and run all. That's not a bad idea to do every now and then um, to make sure that your code is runnable uh, from the very start, starting with a fresh uh, set of memory um, for reproducibility purposes. All right, um, let's see. Um, so uh, here we've got some LaTeX written out, and to do a display equation, uh, you start with two dollar signs, and then write the LaTeX code, and then end with two dollar signs. If you want to do uh, LaTeX in the middle of a sentence, you just use one dollar sign, and then end it with another dollar sign. Uh, here's the LaTeX code for creating this uh, matrix kind of equation. Um, and then we can just hit escape. Um, for graphing probability distributions, which is part of one of the homeworks, uh, I've copied the R code here so we can see how it relates to the Python version. Um, so for example, sequence in R is what generates like negative 5, negative 4.9, negative 
and in Python you would do that with numpy np.arrange. Um, and I mean here's the main calculation uh, of the Laplace distribution. And then here's the main calculation. Uh, no, here's the main calculation for the logistic. This is just setting up a parameter that we need to make sure we get the standard deviation that we want. Um, all right.